Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth and welcome to my channel in which I document my 2021 no buy year. So this video is probably going to be rather short. I just wanted to give a little check in on how things are going with my no buy and if you hear my cats, one or more of them howling in the background, I apologize. They think it's dinner time. It's not dinner time, but they think it is. But the no buy has felt good. It has felt really good to be starting this journey. I do feel like I haven't really faced the full brunt of it yet, which I will get into when I talk about my specific sort of talking points around my thoughts for the no buy. But I would say overall that my no buy year is going smoothly so far. Granted, I am only two and a half weeks into my no buy. So if it wasn't going well, I think I would be very concerned. So my thoughts specifically on the no buy. My first thought is that it is a relief to use my no buy year as my, it's just, I'm not going to shop. So I used to spend all of this time online, shopping online, putting things in my cart, taking things out of my cart, reading reviews, trying to find the best item for whatever, what I was specifically looking for. I mean, that ate up huge amounts of my time, especially on the weekend. And it is a relief to not be engaged so intensely in that obsessive, time-consuming behavior. I do still go online to, I wouldn't say really window shop, but sometimes to just look at things on trend mood, to look at things as I do research for my YouTube channel. So it's not like I am not going online at all. In fact, I'm, I am a little surprised at how much time I'm still spending online, even though I haven't done any shopping. So that is sort of a mixed bag. That part of it is sort of a mixed bag for me because even though I am feeling this relief that I'm just going to fall back on the no buy, you know, if I'm tempted to buy something, I just have to remind myself, I can't, I, I can't, if it, if it falls within one of the categories for my no buy that I'm not allowed to buy, I just, I can't buy it. I just have to fall back on that as my excuse as to why I can't buy that thing. But I must say that I am surprised that I haven't, I don't feel like I have gotten as much time back as I thought I would. I think part of that is the YouTube channel. I've been doing a lot of research, just trying to build my skills up so that I can produce more quality content. So that's been happening, a lot of research around the YouTube channel, trying to learn new skills, and that's been taking up uh, a lot of my time. I also have been really enjoying reading more. Reading has always been one of my favorite hobbies, and I have had an opportunity to read more, which I'm really enjoying. I've been reading a lot more of my periodicals. So I subscribe to quite a few periodicals that support my career, that help me to stay on top of current scientific research. So it's been nice, really, really nice to have that extra time to read some of those periodicals, which tend to be very dense. And then I am using my local library vigorously. <laughs> I love our local library. It's pretty small. The town that we live in is quite small, but the library is part of a much larger network where you can 
search for books within the network and have those books transported to your local library for checkout. So even though the actual physical space of my local library is quite small and the selection within that space limited, it doesn't feel that way to me at all. Up until, I don't think in the past, I mean, I've really been using my local library pretty steadily, I think for the, about the past two years. And I can only recall one time when there was a book that I wanted that my local library didn't have and that wasn't in the wider network. So I recently gone into my library's website and requested a whole bunch of books and I'm super excited to dive into those. I actually am right at the tail end of one of the books that I've picked up, which I will talk about here. This is the book. It's called Not Buying It, My Year Without Shopping by Judith Levine. This was actually recommended in my No Buy 2021 Facebook group, which I'm also really enjoying. A lot of excellent resources in that group, a lot of moral support in that group. So I've really been enjoying interacting with fellow no buyers <laughs> so far um, in these first few weeks of January. This book, I'm almost done. I have to say, I mean, this book is was published 2006. It's not a recent book. I was expecting it to be more of a, to have more practical tips and tricks more of a manual on a no buy year and it's much more of a narrative sort of stream of consciousness style that while I can enjoy it just from for the sake of what it is it wasn't what I was expecting and I I wanted more from this book I wanted a lot more from this book you know my brain really wanted more a uh, concrete information, concrete steps that the author was taking for her no by year and her thoughts around it. It's just, this book is all over the place. It's, it talks a lot about the politics of the time, which I understand because she's a journalist, the, the author, Judith Levine, and she especially writes about the intersection between culture and politics. So it makes sense that, you know, this book that she's writing is going to have threads of that throughout. She definitely explores that relationship between how this kind of runaway train of consumerism, specifically in America, but also in other countries as well, she touches upon and then how it affects her life and it's a good read it's a good narrative read but if you are looking for help with your no by ear which is what i was looking for you're this isn't going to be it this will just maybe give you some more context about consumerism in the united states so those are my thoughts about that the other books i have coming are what I would call fluff. <laughs> Sci-fi, fantasy, that's typically what I get actually from the library. It didn't always used to be the case. My bachelor's degree is in English literature and I have to say I have not fed that beast in a while, partly because I use up most of my brain power <laughs> on my on my job on my career reading science periodicals things like that and my brain just needs a break when it comes to reading books for the most part i just want something that's fun and entertaining and escapist so all the other books that are coming from the library tend in that direction i do have some heavier books coming down the pipeline and I will do a book roundup video. Maybe it won't just be dedicated book roundup, a dedicated book up, book roundup video. 
Maybe it'll be baked into something else. But once all of my library books come, I'll do like a little mini library haul as well as what's on my radar for, for future reading for the next couple weeks and show all of those books. But I've really been enjoying having more time to just read. It just feels like a slower life, um, a slower pace to my life when I'm not frantically, I wouldn't say frantically, but I don't know, when I you, when you're just consumed with being online and shopping all the time, it just feels like there's this undercurrent, this frantic undercurrent, this frenzy of scarcity. When you think about, you know, it's a sale, right? So you get the an email for a sale and the way the, the email is worded just makes you feel like there, there's hardly any more left. I have to get on there. I have to look. I have to browse as quickly as possible before all the great deals get snatched up, that kind of thing. And I don't really have that anymore. I don't have that or I haven't had that feeling thus far. Not to say that it won't come back, it won't rear its ugly head later this year, but I haven't had that feeling thus far. Kind of circling back to my Facebook group as well and talking specifically about those resources, one thing I really enjoyed is they post, uh, the, the moderator for the Facebook page posts a monthly challenge. And this month's challenge was a digital detox. So unsubscribing from all of those sale emails from retailers, unsubscribing from emails that just you don't need to be cluttering your inbox with. Delete, going and doing a digital detox of photos. So going into your phone, your devices, deleting photos that don't need to be in there, doing a digital detox of all of the stuff that just accumulates on your computer. You know, multiple versions of one file, things like that. So that's been the January 2021 challenge in my Facebook No Buy group. And I've really been enjoying that. So in the morning I have, you know, this is now, I don't know, my third cup. I make my tea, I sit down with my iPad and I commit to unsubscribing from at least five emails. I usually do more than that, but I subscribe from at least five email subscriptions and then go in and delete at least five photos and then delete at least five files, obsolete files from my computer. And that has felt really good to go through that. So yeah, I mean, I don't think that that was something I would have even thought to do if it hadn't been for that Facebook challenge for my no buy Facebook group challenge. So that's felt really good. I have been tempted to buy some things. I haven't other than you know, food and things, things that are within the rules of my no buy that I'm allowed to buy, but I haven't, I haven't broken the rules yet. I shouldn't say yet. I have not broken the rules and I'm not going to. So I haven't broken the rules, but I have had some temptations and I will talk more specifically about those temptations in my monthly wrap up. So I'm going to do a monthly sort of fantasy haul, anti-haul situation where I talk about the things that I did buy in the month and, that, and obviously in those things within the rules and then what I didn't buy but that I wanted to. So I will be making that video at the end of January. I was talking about what I had been tempted by. Specifically, it's been around things that I have been returning. So in a frenzy at the end of 2020, completely driven by the knowledge that my no buy year was on the horizon, I tried to think of all of the things that I felt like my closet needed, needed. I didn't really need anything, but that I felt that I needed. And I did a flurry of purchases in December and a lot of those things didn't arrive until January. Most of them went back. I think 
I would say 85% of the things that I bought went back. A lot of it was due to sizing issues. And I did have that, I did make that rule in my no buy that I am allowed to exchange or purchase an item to replace an item that I'd purchased at the end of 2020 if the sizing was off and I needed a different size. So that's mostly what I've been tempted by, specifically a pair of jeans and then a cardigan that I bought that did not work due to sizing. Even though it's within the rules of my no buy to get a different size of those items, it just, it's not sitting well with me right now. It feels like not breaking the rules, but that I was a little dishonest when I wrote that rule <laughs> to sort of give myself an escape hatch, an excuse to buy, even though, do I really need those things? It's not like I don't have a pair of jeans. And it's not like I don't have cardigans. In fact, I would say sweaters, cardigans, boots, and blazers are my Achilles heel as far as fashion is concerned. And if one were to look at the number of cardigans that I already have in my closet, that you could certainly make a very valid argument that there is no way <laughs> that I should buy another cardigan. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I've been tempted and I'll, I'll actually give more information on those temptations in that end of that January roundup video, end of the month roundup video. But I've been tempted by that and I haven't bought them, bought the replacement sizes and I, I don't know. I don't know where I stand on that right now, how I feel about that, but right now it just kind of feels icky. Like I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it. So I guess that means I shouldn't. <laughs> I have been thinking about getting a planner for 2021, like a paper, a paper planner. And up until, I can't even remember the last time I purchased a paper planner. It has to have been years. We used to get planners at my work and I would use those for lesson, lesson planning. And then I found this app that I use for lesson planning instead. And I feel, I feel really comfortable with that app. It, I do all my lesson planning and scheduling in there for my classes, for my duties. I put my work to-do list in there. So that feels taken care of. That feels organized. It's all centralized in one location. I, I don't feel like I need a planner for work purposes. But I am wondering about a planner for more of my personal life, for my personal goals, for this YouTube channel, for my no buy year. Because right now, I feel like I have all of my planning tools, my to-do lists, my calendars, all of that spread spread apart. It's spread around all these different apps and Google Calendar and Google Notes and reminders on my iPad. It's just, my brain doesn't like that. I want everything in a centralized location, the way I have it for my, for my teaching, for my work. So I'm thinking about getting a planner and I don't know if that is a genuine, I mean, it's within the rules of my no buy. I don't, I don't feel like if I bought a planner that I would have, it doesn't feel icky to me the way, you know, getting that different size cardigan, different size jeans feels icky to me. It doesn't feel icky to me. I'm just wondering if I am a victim of advertising or a victim of the start of the year flurry of goal planning and resolution planning. And, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about that. My Facebook feed is certainly clogged with 
ads for planners and people talking about buying a planner and making their resolutions or goal setting for the year. So I'm, I've been trying to sit with that feeling of, of wanting the planner and trying to ascertain, is this, is this a genuine, will this be, I, I don't want to say it's a genuine need. I don't need a planner. I haven't had a paper planner for years and I have not died. So I don't need a planner, but just trying to figure out if that would help me stay organized, help clear out some of my brain clutter that currently exists with having my the personal aspects of my life kind of in all of these different places. I just don't know. I I fancy myself an organized person. So the planner just, oh, it, it just feeds that part of my soul. It feeds that part of my, my character that this idea of having the planner, having everything in one spot, getting some nice pens. I, already, I don't need to get new pens. I have some nice pens already, but like using nice gel pens to make lists and check off the list. I am a big list maker. I love to make lists. I love to check things off of lists. I just like to be organized. And right now I feel that I'm not with my personal life, with all of these things being kind of in different places. And that just doesn't sit very well with me. I wonder if I would be more productive if I had a planner. If you, you know what, let me know. I would love to hear from you if you use a planner. If you use a planner, let me know. Is it a paper planner? Is it an online planner? Do you use an online organizational system? Please let me know. I would love to hear from you in the comments and to get more perspective on this. I think just hearing different perspectives and how different people keep their lives organized will help me really drill down and figure out if this is something that truly will be helpful and that I should do or if I should just pass. So please let me know in the comments what you think about that, about the paper planner. Do you have one? How do you keep your life organized? I want to know. Tell me. I'm nosy. <laughs> Another thing I've really been enjoying is getting to know my wardrobe better. I've been watching a lot of styling videos on YouTube, especially Jessica Harumi's styling videos. I will drop a link to her channel down below as well as to her Instagram and her blog. I love Jessica Harumi. She's absolutely stunning. She has the most soothing, calming, zen demeanor. If I am having a frantic, crazy day, watching one of her videos just knocks the stuffing out of me in the best way where it's just, oh, take a breath. <laughs> have some tea, watch a Jessica Harumi video, and take a breath. So I highly recommend you follow her. She's amazing. I love her style too. She is, she has a very classic, slightly androgynous, timeless style that's really built upon fewer high quality pieces, which is where I want to go with my wardrobe. The no buy year will obviously prevent me from purchasing new items for my wardrobe unless something is worn out and I don't have a replacement or, or an alternative for it already. But moving forward, I, I've actually been doing this for a while now. Not just It's not just something I've been thinking about with my no buy year. It, it, I've been doing this now for a few years now. That I want to have fewer higher quality pieces and spend more money on fewer pieces that last and last and last. I've been doing a lot of research on consumerism waste. So the waste that results from the rampant consumerism in this country and in other countries as well. And fast fashion is just, it is horrific in so many ways, not just, not just for the environment, but also for humanity. I mean, it's just really, it's just really something. And I want to start moving towards what Jessica Harumi would say is a slow fashion lifestyle. You know how there was that slow food movement, slow fashion movement. 
So I've been really enjoying watching her styling videos and trying to challenge myself that even if I don't have the exact or even a very similar piece in my own wardrobe that she's wearing in an outfit that I want to recreate, how can I do that with what I have? So that's been really interesting and fun for me. And I feel like been pushing me a little bit sartorially, which I'm really enjoying because I love clothes and I love fashion. So I have been really digging that aspect of my no by ear as well. And that's about it. I, I want to wrap up with one final thought. And that is that I don't think that I have felt the full brunt of my no by year yet. I think it's because of all of those packages that came from my shopping spree in December. So even though I haven't been going online to buy new things in January, new things are still coming. <laughs> I think now it's done. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure everything that I ordered in December has arrived. So nothing, nothing new is coming, but I think the most recent package came like two or three days ago. So I definitely don't think I have felt the brunt of my no by ear yet. And we'll see. We'll see what happens when, now that all the, arriving packages, that arriving packages stream has dried up and I'm not shopping anymore, I'm not getting any new things, no new packages are coming, nothing to look forward to. And we'll see how that shakes out. It's going to be a dry spell for a while and we'll see how that goes. So those are all my thoughts about how my no buy year is going. If you are engaged in a no or low buy situation, whether that's for a week, a month, a year, whatever the case may be, if you did a low buy or no buy, I would love to hear from you in the comments. How did it go? What were your thoughts about it? Did you have any real epiphanies during the no buy if you're engaged in it? Or you know, if you're already done with your no buy, what were your big takeaways? I would love to hear from you because again, I'm trying to build a little community here of like-minded people. So please drop me a comment below and please remember to like this video. It really helps me out. And please subscribe if you would like to follow me on my no buy journey and hit that little notification bell so that you will be notified of all my upcoming uploads. So I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye!